Hey, hey, hello, my name is Shelly and today it's my uh, February wrap up. Why did I whisper that? I don't know. <laughs> so, um, it is a couple of days left of February, so I'm, uh, you know, pre-filming because we can do that sometime. Uh, but I have also realized that uh, the only book that I technically have left to finish in February, I'm not going to be finishing. Um, so yeah, I thought, you know, let's just do this wrap up. Well, most of the books are semi fresh in my mind. And I can, you know, walk the walk of shame for not actually finishing our February book club pick of the month again yeah. so uh, the book I <laughs> I am supposed to be finishing in February is of course um, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini I'm sorry but Tom is kind of distracting me over here and uh, mm. He's picking up stuff and walking away with them, so I'm gonna have a good old time picking up stuff later. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna be finishing that book um, before February ends, and it's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm catching up, I'm catching up, I'm doing all the things, uh, but uh, I digress. I digress. We should just move on to the books I actually read in February. So, Okay, uh, so let's start with the ebook I read. Um, so I'll put up a little picture somewhere around here, seems good. Uh, it is, of course, Waking Kate. It is Waking Kate by Sarah Addison Atlin, and it is a prequel novella for her novel Lost Lake. Um, so it was a very, very quick read. It was like 27 pages, I believe. Uh, I did read it during our 24-hour live that we kind of didn't actually do 24-hour live. But yeah, now. <laughs> it felt like a good way to start by reading a 27-page, pretty sure that's how many pages it was, uh, little ebook, and, you know, feeling that accomplishment of having finished a book even though it's only a handful of pages long. It doesn't matter, it still counts. Um, what more can I say about that? Not a lot. I didn't feel like it was... You had to have read this little prequel novella. Um, but then again, it was a long time ago since I read Lost Lake, so... Uh, maybe if I reread Lost Lake like now when that novella is still in my head um, maybe I will get more of a sense of the novel but I don't think so uh, it's basically just why Kate <laughs> why Kate went to Lost Lake in the first place or how she why she ended up there except for the fact that um, the woman who owns and runs Lost Lake camping site is it's her aunt or great aunt or something they're related um, so yeah that's that one out of the way so let's move in to the audiobooks I uh, read I hate saying I, I there's something about like audiobooks I hate when people say I'm gonna read an audiobook no no you listen to an audiobook. <laughs> it still counts as having read a book, but you you don't read audio. Not in that sense. Yeah. So <laughs> Moving on. So I have the physical books here because I have read them a good many few times. Why do I have like random pieces of feather um, cat life so uh, I have read the Hush Hush series uh, a good number of times before 
Um, it's one of those series that kind of sticks to you and one when you were a certain age, I guess, when you first read them, it was kind of like you reread them a few times. Um, at least if you like me and rereads a lot. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say they are great masterpiece works of art or whatever, um, but they are enjoyable in, in some way. Um, since the first time I read them, I've, I've known how toxic they were. It was never at a point where I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna worship this couple. <laughs> I'm gonna worship. I need Patch in my life. He's like the best man alive. I need him. No, never. <laughs> never, ever, ever. Um, but while listening to these, um, I, first of all, the narrator sucked. I mention all this in my video, my special video for this audio thing. Um, First of all, the narrator sucked. She should not be a narrator of books because she absolutely uh, sucked. Um, <laughs> uh, that's basically the first point. The second point is uh, I had totally forgotten or I'm pretty sure I've totally forgotten. I must have meant I'm not mentioning it, but I must have noticed it at some point. Except, I mean, before the, f yeah, I must have noticed it at some point while reading it. But um, Nora, the main character, her best friend V. Oh, that's a toxic relationship too. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I don't know if it was more noticeable, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if it was more noticeable uh, while I was listening to it or if I just didn't really pay attention to that character while reading it because she was never like, she was never a fun character, let's say that. So, moving on from all of that, um, since I've been doing catch-ups, um, I have actually caught up with the uh, January pick of the month for a book club, which was Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, um, Mr. Brandy Sandy. <laughs> so this is my very first Brandon Sanderson book, so I don't really have anything else to go by as far as his writing and stuff. Um, but I have heard that apparently this is uh, the worst of his books. It's not a bad book, but the writing is not the best. It's not as good as um, his more recent works, let's say that. Um, so this is supposed to be a standalone, but I do know, or at least according to uh, Goodreads, there is at least one novella, maybe possibly two. I'm not really sure why there's so much information. But apparently also there's supposed to be like a second book, or maybe even a third book. It's been a while, so I should like just pull up Goodreads. I'm a lazy bitch. I don't do that. Um, however, <laughs> so there is supposed to be like a sequel or something, but it is a standalone so far. Uh, said sequel will not even make an appearance until a lot of other sequels are done. So we will be waiting like 30 years or so before we see a sequel. Um, what I will say about this book, because we are going to do a catch up live of uh, our November, December and our January picks very, very shortly. Um, hopefully very, very shortly when this video is out. Um, so as far as <laughs> I will say this much about this book. Um, before the live is that I did really like it. It's not like a five star book for me um, but I did you know with fantasy books like this where there's like multiple perspectives and all that it usually takes me a good long while before I 
you know, get into the books and get to know the characters um, as well as one needs to know a character while reading these kinds of books. I'm so distracted by my cat right now, it's crazy. <laughs> They're playing around and making faces and it's like, yeah, so distracted, so distracted. So, back to Elantris. Um, I did get into the book a lot sooner than I thought I would, but like by the middle of it I was like where is this book actually gonna go because there were like things popping up every now and again and you would sort of get like oh so this is how this is gonna be and this is how that is gonna be and and so on and so forth and little things would get resolved and then something else would pop up and you were like okay but I, I guess this is like moving the story along but I didn't feel like there was like a bigger picture like a bigger plot that was we were trying to aim for it was just a bunch of little things and when I then came to the end I felt a bit cheated <laughs> um I mean there's an ending and you can very much see that this could be just a standalone book but there are some like questions here and there that I'm like but why didn't we find out about this and why didn't we find out about that and what's gonna happen with this and you you get my drift you get my drift um so I wouldn't say it's a bad book and I wouldn't say it's badly written because it was very easy to read for kind of a chunky fantasy book um but there was just a few things missing here and there um so yeah um but i will say that it has gotten me more excited about um his other books so um well excited to read those later and i mean we do have two more brandon sanderson books this year in our book club so i mean if you want to read along with them keep an eye on out on on all the socials <laughs> so shall we do the one book or the two books one book two book one book two book uh, another book I finished during our failed 24-hour live was The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with this book. Yeah. Um, so I started reading it and I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Um, I, I didn't really know what the book was about when I started it. <laughs> Basically, it's in the title. Um, there's this girl, she's in a prison, and she's also a healer. So she's a prison healer. It's in the title. <laughs> so basically, we go on this little journey with... What is her name? What was her name? <laughs> I've forgotten it already. Kiva. That's her name. Jesus. Um, so basically, we, we go on this little journey uh, with her. So she thinks about back to her past of how she actually ended up in said prison um because it's i mean it's a, it's a prison what did you do to get there and because uh, she doesn't seem like a bad person so you're like well this is a place with like murderers and thieves and basically lots of bad people um so you're like how did you get there uh we do find out sort of so i'm not sure how to really explain this book without spoiling it um but i will say we have mysteries we have magic ish and we have like challenges why can i say that word challenges challenges uh that needs to be completed <laughs> Um, we have semi-romance, I guess, not like full-on, but like feelings, feelings, because I mean, it's a YA book, we, we, let's, let's keep it all, it's, it's not a book about romance, let's say that, so, 
yeah. Uh, but I picked it up not knowing anything um, about it, not really, uh, and got pretty hooked, like, early on. <laughs> and now I feel obsessed, especially after that ending, because I did not see any of it coming. Did I just spoil anything? I don't know. I don't care. Um, so basically you, what I went through was like, oh, I wonder if it's like this way. Yeah, I wasn't very right about a lot of things in this book. Uh, and I like that. I like not knowing what's going to happen because I accidentally guessed it. So. Um, I'm obsessed. I want the next one like yesterday. Um, so I'm gonna have to pick that up very, very shortly. So, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Um, if you want a very easy read, pick this up because it's actually a very easy, good book. Yes. <laughs> Did that sell it for you? No? Okay then. So the last two books uh, is actually a duology. And I did read the first one, I, I want to say last year, it's either last year or the year before, one of them. Um, so it is The Magpie Society by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCullough. So we have uh, one for sorrow and we have two for joy. Um, so these are basically, I guess, the like what what everyone said or like what well what Zoe Sugg said on her YouTube channel because yeah that's how I knew about these books so what people said they were were sort of like boarding school meets broad church that kind of a crossover and yes I think um I didn't think so after I'd first read the the first book um, for the first time. I reread it now. So, the first time I read A One for Sorrow, I felt like it didn't live up to what people were saying that it should be. So, to say I was a bit disappointed would be an understatement. I didn't feel like it was like a bad book, but there were loads of things that I was like, no. Um, so, especially in the beginning, I think it's like the first 50 pages or something like that. They do so many um, references. They, they do so many references like um, this is uh, like right out of Dynasty or this is like the crown from Strictly Come Dancing. I, I don't actually remember the references is, 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 um, because I forgot and I don't want to remember them. But basically they put on reference after reference after reference and it's like these are too many references for something that doesn't really have anything to do with said book. So I didn't like it because of those. Um, but I mean once you get through all that crap <laughs> but once you get through all that crap because those references were crap let's be honest um you do sort of like get into the mystery of it all we so we switch perspectives between ivy and what's the other one called audrey yes ivy and audrey <laughs> My goodness. So we switch back and forth between those two girls' perspective. You, well, I didn't really, I was like, I have no idea what's going on. So you sort of like get, you get misled a lot. Um, I enjoy that. I really enjoy that. Um, so, hello. <laughs> So picking up the sequel right after I'd finished the reread of the first one was a very good idea um, because it 
I mean, it takes off. It's 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 basically just the next part of the story. And yes, yes, second book, yes, so so much better. Um, also, I did not see that ending coming. Not until like the end and um while we were getting to the end i was like yeah this must be the way it's gonna be um but throughout no i did not see that coming and um thinking about it i, I was trying to look for like plot holes and i feel like i want to reread this duology at some point especially knowing the ending um and look for the plot holes because <laughs> I can't, I couldn't think of any, like, in particularly, um, uh, when I finished the book. So, I would be interested to see if they actually, oh, Tom, why do you need to play with that jingle ball? <laughs> I would be interested, <laughs> damn you, Tom, I would be interested to reread them and see if I can spot the plot holes because yeah i i really did not see that one coming no no um so i thoroughly enjoyed this duology a lot more once i you know read both of them um also yeah i got over the <laughs> too many references that doesn't make any sense um in the first book <laughs> I love how I just change uh, in the middle of anything. Everything, anything. Oh dear lord. So I read, let's see, one, two, three, four physical books, one ebook, and listen to four audiobooks. So nine books? If we count 27 pages as a book. Yes. Um, I feel like that was a decent month. <sighs> I do wonder how much you can hear the jingly ball bell. The jingly bell ball. The thing Tom is playing with, which is very loud for me. Yeah. Anyway, so that was my February month because, yeah, I'm not finishing that chunky, chunky bitch of a book um, before February ends. I will try to, but I highly doubt it. And um, yeah. I don't like that toy. Uh, so. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Damn it! This is gonna be a bitch to edit, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so... I'm pretty happy with this reading month. It's okay, it's decent enough. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> It is a good few books. I'm okay with this. Yes, yes, I am. So, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Until then, uh, take care. Oh, boy.